Hi you guys, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to do a really quick video today. I know I say that every week, but really this one is got to be fast. I am going out of town to an event this weekend and um, I also have a big class coming up next week and I need to pack for it. So this has to be quick. This may be um, looking familiar to you. We're going to use this background that we made out of acrylic paint and celery. Remember we did the stamping of celery to make these abstract roses. And if you don't remember that video, I will link it up above and um, you can watch it there. But we um, just did a quick stamping on this and we said we'd use it in a art journal page. Okay, so I've got my art journal out that I'm trying to finish and I only have a few pages left. I've got one page here that's empty. Um, I've got one that we were working on before. Something that's covered. Get rid of that. Um, just a feather thing. I think that might be finished. I'm not sure. Um, I was practicing for another class that I have coming up that's called Pen and Wash. It's using permanent ink pen and watercolor wash to make these really cool feathers. Um, so I don't have very many pages left. I've got maybe five or six pages here. Um, and otherwise, I am looking pretty full. This definitely needs some help. This is pretty um, ugly. And then I've got a couple here. But other than that, we are almost to the end of this um, art journal. So that's exciting. I'm going to work on this page here today because we're just going to do a um, half page spread. Like this. My thoughts are going to be, I'm going to do um, a watercolor background on here and um, give this some depth and dimension. I still have this. Um, card laying on my desk that is, says here. Um, I may need to incorporate that just to get it off my desk. And we're going to cut this down after I put watercolor on it. We're going to give this a black gesso um, background. I got some black gesso when I was at um, Madison Mingle and off the free table. So I want to try it out and use it. And then we'll incorporate this into this art journal so that I can have another page. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. So let's just get going, okay? I'm going to go ahead and put some of this black gesso very simply on this page. I just want to give it a nice black background here. Um, to make that page we're going to work on pop out, stand out, I guess I could say. So just framing it in, and this does not have to be anything fancy. I am going to use that piece of paper, deli paper that we had to protect my other pages here. Because uh, we're getting to the end, we don't want to mess up pages now, right? Need a little bit more. I like this black gesso. Um, I've never used, I've never used Dina Wakeley's black gesso before. Uh, it seems to be real nice. So you might want to check it out and get some for yourself. I really love her acrylic paints and I use those quite often. All right, so I'm going to just have this. I'm going to set it aside. This will be perfect. As perfect as we need it, right? It's just going to be a frame, a little border. So simple, simple. I'm going to set that aside to dry. Okay, let's work on this here. I'm going to just put down some um, watercolor 
and I got out my Gonzai Tombi, Tombi watercolors. Um, my palette is looking pretty empty here because I'm setting up for a class, but I chose this color, Aquamarine Pale, and I'm going to use that one. Put it in a palette here, and I'm just giving it some water. I'll get rid of this off of our table so we can see a little bit better. And I'm just going to very, very loosely, I guess I can get rid of this too, um, do a wash on the background of this abstract rose picture um, and have it be a real nice art journal page. I am doing it very loosely. I want to see the strokes. I want to leave some white. I want it to just be real loose and quick. Like I said, I need this to be quick and easy. I didn't want to leave you hanging without a video for Saturday. So something is better than nothing, right? This obviously is going to have to dry. As you can see, I'm leaving the lines, the stroke marks, the brush marks, and everything visible. And it's going to be cut down. I love these paints. If you have an opportunity to get some of these watercolors by Kirataki. I really, really like them. I'm really into watercolor lately. I love all kinds of mediums. You know, someone says, well, what's your medium? <laughs> I'm like, uh, all of them? I know that's not very practical, but why limit yourself when we have so many wonderful, wonderful mediums and tools at your fingertips. Especially now, you know how we can just call it right up and order it. Order it from your local craft stores, of course. Do that first. But there's just so many options out there, aren't there? Okay, so here's our background. I love that. Would it be kind of neat if we took a little bit of splatter? Oops, that was a big splatter. And maybe put some water droplets on there. That was a really big splatter. Very cool. All right, great background. Quick and easy. I'm using what I had already created so that we could do this video together today. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to come back. We're going to combine this into our art journal. We're going to add a sentiment, which I'm probably going to cut down, and maybe a little bit of embellishment. You know me, I've got to have something here. But um, I'll leave you here for now. Be right back, and we'll finish this up. All right? Talk to you in a bit. I am back. <clears throat> okay, everything is dry. This is dry and this is dry. The more I'm looking at this, I'm like, ooh, I'm having a hard time envisioning cutting it down. <laughs> but I will do it. I'm just thinking about just using part of it. Then I need a little bit more just so. Here, let's do this. Let's. I think I just need a little more gesso up here. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Just go with that. You know, it's an art journal. 
It's an art journal, not an issue. All right. Set that aside. So I'll let that dry a little bit. Here's what I got on my tray. A uh, pair, pair of scissors. A uh, rip ruler. If you haven't seen that, that's kind of neat. Some brown ink. Some bow clips for those. Some glue stick. Brown. A uh, dauber. My sentiment. And some foam tape. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to rip this <clears throat> paper. Get rid of our notebook. And I know you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Ah! I don't want to rip it. But for the sake of the video, let's do it. Okay, here's the tip on this. When you're ripping this small side, you can go like this. Be very careful. Or you can flip it over here like this. Line up your tool. Hold it down. And you don't have to be so careful. Okay, that's looking about right. I think this one's a little crooked now. So, we'll fix it. That's better. Okay, this rip tool was from Creative Memories, I believe. They have all kinds of them. Um, they have plastic ones. I really like this metal one. Um, I just like it because it gives it this textured edge. You really got to hold down when you do it this side. All right, and then the bottom, and I think we got it. Yeah, Rip Ruler is a fun tool for mixed media. Hold that down. And I'm really pushing down. There. We got it. Okay. Keep this kind of on camera for you. It's still a little bit... And now that I'm looking at that black background frame, I have another idea. I know, that's just how creativity works. I'm going to give this a dry with my heat gun, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to do some, I think it's called, uh, some kind of writing, uh, Semitic writing, something like that, where you just write your thoughts and it doesn't have to look like anything so let me turn this off i'll be right back and we'll put it all together okay we're dry so if you can tell me in the comments below the name of this writing writing that you can't really read um yeah just let me know uh i made sure that this was dry so that I could use my, I've got a 0.7 millimeter, uh, what is it, Pasca pen. And I thought that maybe this would be the trick. I also like to use these Presto Fine Point Jumbo Correction pans. So let's see what this one does, see if I can get that one going. And I'm just pressing it on my paper here just to get it going. And you, this one you have to squeeze while you write. So so this one is much better. Um, for writing, much more uh, bold, isn't it? Okay. 
and then we'll just keep going pretend we'll go across this across the page <laughs> it's kind of hard not to make it into any words so that you can't read it. Okay, I think that's cool. It just adds another layer. This is going to take a little bit to dry. So we'll go back to something else. We'll go back to our page. How's that looking? I like it. I think it should be maybe a little more off of this side like this now I got it crooked straighten it up a little bit there that looks good to me that looks real good to me get rid of this um, I'm going to go around it with, I think, my black big Sharpie. And I'm going to be really careful not to go into the actual picture. So I'm being real careful. And then that will give a real crisp edge and definition to the piece. And while I was digging for something earlier, waiting for this to dry, of course, I had another little idea. And that's how inspiration happens, doesn't it? You um, start with one idea, you keep going, you keep going, and then all of a sudden, wow, we've got a pretty darn cool art journal page, right? Um I was going to use glue stick on here, and I think I'm still going to, but I'm going to kind of leave the edges maybe a little curled up like this. All right, so let's not do those two edges. Again giving it another layer of dimension, right? Just by leaving those two edges curled up. These ones I stuck down, and these ones I curled up a little bit. And when it's curled up, I don't like how that black is show or that white is showing. So I'm going to just put a little black there. Looks like I need just a dot more under here of gesso. All right. Cool. Okay. So like I said, when I was digging for some stuff, I went, came across the card that I made from these um, celery abstract roses. And so I was like, oh, my art journal page could really use a butterfly like this. So I'm going to pull it off this card. I'm going to stick it on this art journal page with some dimension. I don't like how these are sticking up so much. down with a clip. This one too. If it'll reach that far. Barely. Okay. Nice. And then our sentiment, wherever that went. There it is. The word is here. I'm going to go around. Just going to rip it a little. because I don't like those straight edges. Hope I'm doing it on camera, probably not. I 
I'm going to round the edges so it's not so stark white. Smudge it a little. I'm going to put it right down here at the bottom. And I'm going to use some foam tape, foam squares. So hopefully this is a quick and easy art journal page for you. Thank you for staying till the end. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I so appreciate it. And what kind of writing that is. You know, this writing here, scribbly writing. Well, I, I know there's a word for it. Asmetic. A, a, I, don't, I don't know. But I'm going to put this down here. Going off the page a little to tie them together. Okay. There we go. Let's put a piece of paper over this side. It's a little distracting. There. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. And we've got it. I think that turned out really cute. Um, Here we go, just a little bit in. Yeah. What do you think? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Talk to you next week. Have a great week and keep creating. That's all you need to do. Keep creating, you'll practice, and then you will grow. All right? Bye.